Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back to Studio G. Now, this is the South Bend 9-inch lathe that I recently acquired from John Collins. And up to this point, I've been using the Lantern tool post. Well, and I kind of like it. I know I've bad-mouthed them, but, you know, there's quite a few uses for them as far as I'm concerned. But I want to mount my Aloris Quick Change tool post on there. This came off my hardened lathe. This is not the correct T-nut. It will not fit this. So the project today is to make a T-nut like this with a 916 fine thread in it that will fit this compound. Let's go down to the other shop where I've got some materials laid out. From what I remember a long time ago when I acquired this post and this one, they came with a blank piece of metal here for and you had to machine it to size. I believe it had the hole drilled and tapped in it but essentially it was just a piece of stock like this and this is what I am going to use for the T-nut. Now of course I can take measurements right off of this T-slot as far as the the width and the height and all of that and that is in fact what I'm going to do but that information is also available in this book but if you're making this for an atlas or any other make, it, it'd be a very similar, similar process to what I'm going to show you here. And here's a close-up from the South Bend book showing the compound rest top. And here's a little sketch of it. And there are different sizes for different size South Bend lays. I'm interested in the column here for the 9 inch and the 10 inch light. Looking at the T-slot from this view, you can see that I want inch and a quarter approximately. It does not have to be tight. We do not want it to be tight. We want it to slide in there loosely. So inch and a quarter and in my stock rack I found some half inch thick stock. However, it's an inch and a half wide. I've already cut a piece to length. The length isn't critical at all. Matter of fact, this might be a little bit too long. I can always trim it off, but at this point it's two and one-fourth. Two inches would be fine also and I cleaned up the end but as I said this is too wide so I'm going to mark this at inch and a quarter and remove that piece. I'm not going to show that. I think I'll take that over to the milling machine and just mill it off real quickly. Could be sawed, could be filed, whatever you want to do. And I'll cut it off at the line. Be right back. Okay, I've milled off one side, so it's now one and a quarter inches wide. You can see it's just nice. I do not want too tight of a fit. You shouldn't have to struggle with it. The T-nut should slide right in there. So now I will find the center. The first thing I'm going to do is drill and tap that hole. So there's the center. I will center punch this and we're ready to drill. Now again the thread is going to be it's 9 16 18 and the tap drill size is a 33 64. The reason I'm making such a big deal out of this hole is it has to be absolutely perpendicular to the workpiece or after you had it mounted in there it's going to draw it up at an angle and it either will not tighten down properly or you're going to crank it so tightly that you're going to damage your compound and break it out. So be careful of that. That's why I'm doing this on the mill, but there's an alternate way as well. Okay, here I am at the bridge port, and you can drill this on your drill press, but the critical thing again is tapping it straight. So it could be drilled like this, and then the drill bit's taken out, and we could guide the tap, and it would be perfectly perpendicular. But Mr. Pete, I don't have a milling machine. What am I going to do? Well, for those of you that do not have a mill, let's show you, let's talk about doing it on the little atlas lathe over, over here. We can drill and tap. All right, the work is mounted in a four jaw chuck on the Craftsman lathe and I've got it centered up real well. Take a look at the center finder here, the steric. I haven't used that in a long time. There are videos on that. That assures that my center punch mark is in alignment with the center 
in the tailstock. So now I'm ready to drill. 33 64ths, but I'll work up to it. Okay, I've got a starter drill. And one fourth inch. Okay, the 9 16 18 tap is being held in this way with a spring-loaded live center concentric brand. I don't believe I'm going to be able to use a tap wrench here because of all of the interferences, so I will use an adjustable wrench that will take a little bit longer. I won't show all of that. Again, this assures that the tap goes in alignment with the hole that you just drilled and the thread will truly be perpendicular. And I'm speaking here mainly to newbies that possibly do not understand this. Okay, I'm ready to tap. I've already put some of this tap magic on there. And the spindle is locked. This is a hand operation, not a power operation. After every turn or two, and make sure you keep the center in the center hole there, back it up to break off the chip. That's the beauty of a spring-loaded center. And I'll go all the way through this as a tapered tap. This is a one quarter inch tool bit and it fits just nicely in there with just a little bit of play. So I have the height gauge set for 250. And now the height gauge set for 0.225. So this is what I'm going to mill out right here. And you can see what it'll look like from the ends so that I end up with essentially a T-nut only in a slightly different dimension. So let's go back to the bridge board. Here we go. Same thing to the other side, off camera. Okay, all done. Except for some deburring. Okay, take a look. It's been deburred. I put an SB on here for South Bend. Doesn't look real good, but let's see if it fits. And it does. Remember that you do not want a tight fit. Now let me explain something else very carefully here. When you examine the bolts that go into these tool posts, one end has a short thread, the other end has a much longer thread. The short thread goes into the T-nut so that it cannot tighten past the length of the thread. That is, we don't want the thread to be sticking out the bottom as we tighten this up because what will happen is you will literally destroy the compound that is you will jack it up the thread will hit the bottom right down here you'll jack it up till you break it which looks like something that somebody did here years ago if they had it way way out at the edge let's go on out to the South Bend machine and see if it works we're back out in the garage at the South Bend machine and we know it's going to fit because it fit the other compound. So in it goes, adjust it however you want it, tighten it up, add your tooling and your workpiece in the chuck and you are ready to work. Now you'll need to make one of those T-nuts for every lay that you have, as, as I said before, it's not standardized. So. Hope you enjoy the video. If you ever have to do this in your shop or what I just showed you there in the way of milling and the drilling and tapping and everything is useful in just about every project you make. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. See you next time.